Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So I love to eat avocados. They're easy to prepare and they're full of healthy fats. Now a study out of the University of California looks into the health aspects that you can get from eating avocados depending on how many you eat per week. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study out of the University of California has got to offer. This is a review of a study I read out of the University of California, the San Diego School of Medicine and the Herbert Wertheim School of Public Health and Human Longevity Science. It explains how researchers conducted a randomized control trial comparing the potential health aspects between families of Mexican descent that consumed a low allotment of avocados, three per week, and families that consumed a high allotment, 14 per week, over a period of six months. And there are links in the description below to the articles I used to put this presentation together. Dr. Matthew Allison, MD, and senior author of the study said, data regarding the evidence of avocado intake on family nutritional status has been non-existent. Recent trials have focused on individuals, primarily adults, and limited to changes in cardiometabolic disease blood markers. Our trial results provide evidence that a nutrition education and high avocado allotment reduces total caloric energy in Mexican heritage families. When it comes to nutrition, the humble avocado is pretty hard to beat. It's soft, buttery insides are rich in vitamins C, E, K and B6 plus, riboflavin, niacin, folate, magnesium, potassium, beta carotene and omega-3 fatty acids. Just half of a medium sized avocado provides up to 20% of the recommended daily fiber, 10% of potassium, 5% magnesium, 15% of folate and 7.5 grams of monounsaturated fatty acids. For the study, the researchers enrolled 72 families, which was 231 individuals in total. The families consisted of at least three members, each over the age of five, residing in the same home, free from chronic disease and not on any specific diet. The families self-identified as Mexican heritage and were randomized into two groups for six months, during which time both groups also received nutrition education sessions. The rationale for focusing on families of Mexican heritage was twofold. Firstly, Hispanic Latino people in the United States have a higher adjusted prevalence of obesity and a lower intake of key nutrients than other demographic groups in the country. Secondly, for Hispanic Latino immigrants, dietary quality worsens as they become more American, adopting a Western dietary pattern that is higher in refined carbohydrates. The researchers wanted to assess if increased but moderate consumption of a single nutrient dense food might measurably improve overall health and decrease diet related disparities. The avocado was chosen because it is a traditionally consumed plant food that was originally domesticated thousands of years ago in Mexico and parts of Central and South America. The findings that were published in the online issue of Nutrients may offer insights how to better address the burgeoning public health issue of obesity and related diseases, particularly in high-risk communities. The researchers found that the high avocado allotment families self-reported lower caloric consumption, reducing their intake of other foods, including dairy, meats and refined grains. The study was funded in part by the Haas Avocado Board, which had no role to play in study design, collection or analysis of the data. The board did, however, provide avocados for the trial at no cost at all. Although the researchers found no change in body mass index measurements or waist circumference between the two groups during the trial, they did note that consuming more avocados appear to increase the speed at which they felt full, which to me as an avocado eater is certainly not surprising. The study found that families consuming more avocados 
correspondingly reduce their consumption of animal protein, specifically chicken, eggs and processed meats. But surprisingly, high avocado consumers also recorded a decreased intake of calcium, iron, sodium, vitamin D, potassium and magnesium, which the researchers said might be associated with eating less. In my humble opinion, regardless of the reasons for showing a decreased intake of many essential minerals and vitamin D, it's very worrying. The article didn't state if the drop was slight from sufficient to insufficient or larger and down into the deficient bracket. First author of the study, Lorena Pacheco said, our results show that the nutrition, education and high avocado intake intervention group significantly reduced their family total energy intake, as well as carbohydrates, protein, fat, including saturated, calcium, magnesium, sodium, iron, potassium and vitamin D. In secondary energy adjusted analysis, the nutrition, education, high avocado allotment group significantly increased their intake of dietary fiber, monounsaturated fatty acids, potassium, vitamin E and folate. Despite the mixed findings and limitations of the study, the researchers say the trial may provide a strategy for supporting existing public health efforts to reduce saturated fat and sodium, both nationally consumed in excess of nutritional guidelines. In addition, there was a high adherence to the study protocols by the participants, underscoring the value of using a single nutrient dense plant food already familiar and favored by the participants. My question, how can they be sure this study was not a clinical study and what is high adherence? The authors also wrote testing of plant foods on energy intake by bicultural and bilingual community health workers should be extended to other populations. So I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. Um, I'd like to see your comments on this particular study. In my humble opinion, this study was not a complete waste of time, but very close to it. After six months, bear in mind it was funded by the Haas Avocado Board, no change whatsoever in people's BMI. It may have been a factor in them reducing their protein intake from animal fats or animal products. Again, not really a problem or an issue unless you specifically are trying to do that for one reason or another but it also decreased their intake of calcium, iron, sodium, vitamin D, potassium, and magnesium. And this, the researcher said, was probably attributed to them eating less, uh, which in my humble opinion, again, is, is not really worthy of note and is not a good idea. The authors also wrote, testing of a culturally appropriate plant-based food energy intake by bicultural, bilingual community health workers should be extended to other populations, and, and why? If it means that you're going to be feeling fuller quicker, that's okay, if that's what you want. But if you're going to be deficient in calcium, iron, sodium, vitamin D, potassium, and magnesium, it either means you've got to start eating the foods that they think cause that, which is the chicken and the fish and the, and the meat products, or you're going to have to start supplementing. Um, I, don't, I don't see the, the point at all. I like avocados. Um, I will continue to eat maybe two or three or four a week. I'm certainly not going to go to 14 a week and I'm definitely going to keep uh, eating chicken, fish and beef. Uh, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. I would really like to see what you think about the results of the study and whether or not you thought it was a worthwhile study or there was some hidden agenda or some reason that it was uh, conducted. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.